Season 2, Episode 18, Automating Teacher Workload with Auto Classmate, with special guest Logan Greenhaw. But first, let's hear from our sponsors. Learning fundamental writing and math skills doesn't have to be boring. Introducing the My First Augmented Reality Workbook Series from Teacher Goals and Quiver Vision. With the Quiver app, students unlock interactive experiences that teach path of motion, phonics, writing, and more. This is perfect for schools that are one-to-one or have tablet stations set up for students to learn. Our augmented reality workbooks are changing the way kids learn, read, and develop literacy skills. They'll love the interactive experiences, and you'll love the results. Email us today about bulk purchases for your classroom, school, or district. Contact at teachergoals.com. My first augmented reality workbook series, Unlocking the Power of Learning. The Hitchhiker's Guide for Educators Tech Talk will begin in 24 seconds. Welcome to the Teacher Goals Tech Talks. I'm Amanda Fox here with co-host Heather Brown. Wait, here we go. And (laughs) you're excited. You decided to hitchhike your way with us today through not only tech tools, but the pedagogies and strategies behind them. Our big theme this month, especially leading up to the week of AI, has been artificial intelligence tools and platforms for educators. Tonight, it's not any different. So um, the cool thing about the tool we're going to talk about tonight is it was founded and developed by a teacher for teachers. But before we bring up our guest, um, Heather, what's been your AI takes the last few weeks? What tools are you playing with, integrating in the classroom, or just exploring something that you've seen pop up? I just love the ways there are so many different ones you can use now. Like you can find the one that matches what you need, whether it's you want word clouds from Curapod or um, like, would you rather questions that I bet are going to get mentioned tonight? Or even helping lesson plan create the actual presentations. It's such a huge time saver. It's phenomenal. Like, I feel like I never have enough time in the day. And these AI platforms really help with that. But they also help with student creativity. So, like, I'm one of the presenters next week, as you know. And um, I'm focusing on how elementary educators can use it. Since I'm an elementary educator. And... One of the things I know that our students struggle with currently is writing. They just don't have the patience for it. They'd rather just talk rather than write. So one of the benefits of AI is you can use it to help them want to write. And so I have some tips and tricks up my sleeve for next week. And And how many other presenters are there? Yeah, for those of you who are, don't know what we're talking about, next week is the week of AI. Um, we are we are taking Day of AI that was rolled out by MIT, and we're turning it into a whole long week event. We have technically over 25 presenters. These are um, our 18 main presenters. Um, Daniel Fitzpatrick is going to start kick us off with a keynote on Sunday, followed by Brett Salakis, the AI classroom, and AI invaded my classroom. We have Steve Dembo, Erica uh, Terry, and Lene Laws, Michael Fricano. He's going to be talking about uh, manifesting 3D worlds using Skybox Labs or Blockade, Blockade Labs. Um, Christina Holtzweitz, um, Heather, <laughs> Eric Francis is going to be talking about DUK and how to use AI to um, develop good questioning and student rigor. Erica Sandstrom, oh my gosh, I'm super excited about her presentation. It's from Script to Screen. Um, Alfonso Mendoza, Mendoza, the Fonz from My Ed Tech, at My Ed Tech Life, he's going to be talking about Adobe Firefly. Um, Bonnie Nieves is going to be talking about learning, using it for um, to teach language and literacy. Eric Kurtz, he's going to be discussing um, BARD. Dan Jones for PBL and Flip Learning. Saba is going to um, talk about design thinking. Jonathan Nalder is going to be talking about STEM and design thinking. And then John Wick, man, we got a treat for you. Um, we've got a, 
Are there issues with the live stream captions? Maybe. Um, I'm not sure what device you're on, but um, potentially. So uh, we've got a, I've got a few video promos. Number one, you can register. Let me pull that back up for the conference by going to teachergoals.com forward slash AI hyphen week. And going back into some of some of these promos, um, we're going to, we've got an amazing t-shirt. We've designed t-shirts for each of our presenters with their avatars. We've got these fun cyberpunk avatars. Let's look at um, the t-shirt. Hey there. Could you forward slash imagine owning a kick-ass shirt like this one? How about I teach you how to make one? Join my session Monday, May 15th at 6 p.m. And let's journey through the center of AI avatars with Midjourney. You may even win one of these amazing t-shirts. So um, the t-shirt link is a uh, bit. Hey there. Could you forward slash imagine owning a Drop it in the link bit.ly forward slash. Hey there. Could AI shirt. And um, John Wick, Dr. Wick, is going to take us through uh, how he created these um, avatars in Midjourney and um, how to use them in terms of integrating Midjourney and design into the classroom. I know Dan Jones has done a lot with that as well, and um, he's going to talk about that. But let's let's hear from Erica Sandstrom. Um, we used DID to create some animated avatars that are actually talking about. Join me for my session from script to screen using AI to co-create a green screen project masterpiece. I'll share my experience of my students and I and how we harness the power of AI to transform scripts into captivating visual creations and a fun digital story. Together, we'll dive into the step-by-step -step process we used of utilizing AI algorithms to merge virtual backgrounds with real life footage from script writing to post-production editing. All right. Awesome. So, so we have to point something out here. Hold up. We've got um, Sonia James. Hello from Tennessee. We've got uh, Freddie from El Paso. Thank you for joining us. Elizabeth from Mexico. Hello. Elena says so cool. And Heather, what did you want to say real quick? So I've noticed that uh, Mid Journey likes to give us all nose piercings. Only I, I also have a nose piercing. <laughs> because we went with the cyberpunk theme. So oh. Apparently, all, everyone in the cyberpunk verse has nose piercings. I do in real life, but all right. Without further ado, let's bring up our guests. We're getting in, into the show, and we haven't even dug into um, into Auto Classmate yet. So, yes, here is Logan Greenhaw, the founder of Auto Classmate from North Carolina. Hey, y'all! Thanks so much for having me on the show. I Hello. love having Southerners on the Hey Y'all. <laughs> I'm from Georgia, so um, I, I miss the, the vernacular. Oh, yeah. You got to have it. It's what gives us, you know, our character. Absolutely. So um, tell us a little bit about yourself, um, your background, and, and what led to the convergence of uh, the creation of Auto Classmate. Yeah. So uh, I'm a beginning teacher. This is technically like only my second kind of full year of teaching in a public school setting. Uh, I'm 29 years old, and so I was actually doing something before I became a teacher, uh, sort of a, a late arrival to the field, but um, I also was a web developer, um, and so I guess technically am still a web developer before I became a teacher, and so uh, through a number of conversations, most, mostly with my wife, Morgan, um, she helped me realize that like web development is fun. I like doing it, uh, but it was teaching has kind of been like the, the missing piece for me for a while. Uh, and so she's ultimately the kind of the person that pushed me in the direction of pursuing a career in public education. And so I started teaching midway through uh, last year in a public middle school here in Hendersonville, North Carolina, uh, teaching English, and I absolutely love it, and uh, it obviously has its challenges, but that's kind of where I currently am at right now. Nice. It's always awesome when your um, inner circle and your spouse supports you and your adventures and endeavors and even gives you that push in the right direction. So, so how is, um, you, you teach ELA, which mm -hmm. is my, my love. Um, I, I taught English and it segued into film, but like, 
how are you, how are you, what, what are you teaching right now? Uh, yeah, so I uh, basically I teach just four units of regular eighth grade English language arts. Um, so four times a day, about 30 kids each classroom. And I am doing my best to work through standards with them and help them understand what on earth theme is as I try to figure out what a, a theme of a story or a poem is. It's kind of like the thing that I will probably say a thousand times tonight because I'm obsessed with this idea and helping students understand it as I don't understand it. Um, oh my gosh. So. My favorite thing when I taught reading was themes. Like that was my big thing. So I get it. I love yeah. themes. <laughs> well, it's super important. You know, it's like what yes, makes us it's human one thing beings. Teach you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's, that's kind of where I'm at. Just public, public school four times a day teaching 30, kiddos and trying to learn alongside them the best that I can uh, and I have a lot of fun with it and they also have a lot of fun with it as well. Awesome so um, tell us a little bit about Auto Classmate what it does and I know um, you're you're keyed up to do a, a demo for us and um, I can't yeah. wait. Yeah so I guess kind of the the missing piece of all the puzzle is um, back in December, I really started to uh, kind of dive into AI, um, like personally starting to poke around and use it and try to understand it. Uh, I've been I've been following a couple of uh, public figures that are plugged into the education world, and I had been kind of, you know, following them and watching them from a distance talk about AI. But it wasn't until December uh, last year where I realized, like, oh, I actually have access to this stuff and could use it for, you know, teaching purposes. Um, and so as I started to learn more and as time progressed and things like ChatGPT became to, uh, kind of really just exploded uh, in popularity, I in January, figured out how to start actually, you know, integrating my web development skills with my passion for teaching and kind of turn the uh, prompts that I had been using in ChatGPT into something that's more kind of systematized, but also much more user friendly for myself. Um, and then that just slowly kind of morphed into this thing that I called uh, auto classmate, or I didn't even call it that. Uh, Morgan, my my spouse came up with the name anyways. So she called it that. And I was like, Hey, that's great because that's what it's doing for me is like, it's automating certain pieces of my workload to make my job just a little bit easier, save me a little bit more time or help me become more creative when it comes to things like planning activities that help students learn in a more dynamic way. So Auto Classmate was kind of born out of this fusion of my web development background, my passion for teaching, and this desire to kind of make things more accessible and easier for myself and then ultimately other educators. And so I've just been kind of building tools that I personally use and turning them into something that's accessible um, and as close to free as possible for as many educators as possible. So if you want me to pull up a demo, I'm happy to jump in there, but are there any other questions that you want me to ask or that no. you don't want to ask? <laughs> no, I, I um, to see the full demo. I've played, I, but I wonder if you have. <laughs> so um, Fawns is watching from My Ed Tech Life. He says, Logan, you're amazing. Um, which no, Fawns is amazing. <laughs> he is pretty amazing, yeah. isn't he? He's one of our presenters next week. I can't wait to, uh, being the host, I get to see everyone. But yeah, let's, like, I can't wait to be, have the front row seat to this demo. We're cool. going to bring it on up. Sure. Awesome. So uh, basically what you're looking at right now, this is the the tools page on uh, my website. So this is uh, kind of just the, the, the tools that I've currently created and are accessible. Um, and if you take a look down at the bottom, these are kind of like my two first tools I came out with. It was the would you rather question generator and then the activation and engagement activity generator, which those are like the two things I was using chat GPT regularly to um, use in my own classroom is I love would you rather questions and I really like activities that are just like kind of weird or creative or require students to do something a little unexpected. 
Um, and so those two tools are kind of near and dear to my heart. And then um, I've slowly built a few more. The lesson plan and activity forecast tool helps kind of predict possible student outcomes for a specific activity or lesson plan that you might want to implement in your classroom. And those three tools I just mentioned are 100% free. They don't require an account. They're free and public. No one has to do anything or provide any information to use them. Uh, and I can demo some of those if you want, but the things I'm most excited about are demoing these premium tools uh, that do require an account on Auto Classmate. One of them is the AI powered lesson plan generator that I uh, spent a couple of months kind of playing around with, and I'm still going to continue to tweak it. And then the other piece that kind of pairs with it is the thing I called the AI powered instructional coach. Um, but I will let y'all take your pick. Is there a tool that you would like to see demoed first or let's, do you want me to take it? Let's ask our viewers. So um, drop in the comments. Is there a specific feature that you would like to see demo? The, the AI powered instructional coach, the AI powered lesson plan generator, the lesson plan and activity forecast tool, um, the would you rather or the act activation and engagement activity generator. I will say that the second graders in the class I'm currently in absolutely love the would you rather questions. Okay, cool. We, um, we, got, a, we got a viewer, uh, coach. Okay, cool. So um, the AI powered instructional coach, it's essentially what we're looking at. Um, I created a fine-tuned version of ChatGPT that basically acts like an instructional coach. And by that, what I mean is, as a beginning teacher, um, I have my own instructional coach that kind of checks in on me. She does observations in my classroom occasionally and provides like just resources and tools that I get to use. Um, so... As someone that enjoys the process of coaching, I decided to kind of just create a chatbot essentially that can offer any kind of advice or guidance or um, respond to any prompt or question that you have in your educational practice and have a conversation with you. It's designed to act kind of like a coach. So um, it could do a full lesson plan, but it also could just, you could use it to um, respond to any kind of concern that you have, like classroom management strategies. Um, so just as a quick demo, we could say, um, could you help me uh, design a few activities that would help students learn how to oh i know identify the theme of a poem and uh please excuse i know i'm an ela teacher but i am not a perfect typer uh, by any stretch of the imagination um, and it will say the same thing <laughs> yeah. i'm typo queen it is in my twitter like bio yeah so. <laughs> so essentially uh this version of chat gpt is it's going to act again like a, a coach. So uh, you'll see in these responses, it's going to give you a few activities that help students identify theme, um, identify the key words, uh, a concept map, analyzing the mood, comparing multiple poems, a written response. But this is where uh, things start to become more of like a, a coaching interaction is it's designed to ask you a question back. So, oh. um, Nice. At the end, it'll say, which activity are you most in and trying with your students? And then you could pick one of these specific um, activities that it generated for you, and then it'll probably ask another question. But this isn't to say you have to respond to the question that the coach asks you. You can totally give it new commands just like you would chat GPT if you need to change gears, or you can always reset the chat if you'd like to. Um, so uh, we could just say like, uh, I like the, uh, I don't know, compare multiple poems. Could you just say, I like one? Yep, like, you could totally say, I like- I like um, one. I like number three, let's do, let's do, I like number four. Uh, can you tell me more? And so it is gonna know, it's gonna, uh, 
process through the whatever response that it has. Mm -hmm. It does have an active working memory, just like ChatGPT would. And what I would say for any user is this is going to have like certain limitations in terms of long term memory, like any AI model that is free and public, there's going to be a limitation on how much it knows. But um, so, for example, I said or we said, I like number four, which was the compare multiple poems asked it to tell us a little bit more. And then it's going to give us basically a list of instructions for this specific uh, result. Then it's kind of done asking questions on this one, but it is going to kind of prompt you to ask more questions. Ask more questions. And the design of this tool is essentially is just it's going to respond to whatever questions you have. It's going to hopefully ask you some clarifying questions if you have them, um, but it's going to continue to provide resources. And again, you can reset it, change topics, do anything you need with it at any time. I really like how it's almost like a conversation. And that's kind of what I tried to model. Again, I'm not going to make an argument that any of my AI tools are perfect. Uh, they're just ones that I think could be helpful because they have been helpful for me. Um, and uh, yeah, the design is supposed to be conversational um, in some kind of, in some kind of way, like it's already primed and meant to ask you questions on its, on its own. Um, so it's like any good coaching environment. I think best case scenario, you're asking it questions and they're asking you questions and you're kind of co-creating um, so I think that this could be a cool tool to use in like a professional learning community where it's almost like you can bring in a third party and ask it questions and it'll also kind of help you guide your own practice or guide you through a lesson planning uh, activity that you're trying to create or co-create with your colleagues. And for those that are just now tuning in, if you go to autoclassmate.io, um, you can play around too and kind of go through some of the tools as he's demoing them. Um, again, the the two tools that were that he's showing us now are part of the premium. So um, with the freemium, uh, what what do our users get? So um, for in terms of the free tools that uh, anyone has access to, it does not require an account. You have access to the Would You Rather question generator, which will present. Uh, it will create 10 would you rather style questions related to any content that you would like. Um, and then the activation and engagement activity generator produces three unique engaging activities that again are targeting a specific learning objective. And then the lesson plan and activity forecast tool, which predicts student outcomes is also free. Uh, okay. And then you also notice I have this coming soon tool that I'm calling the contextual learning activity generator, which is another type of activity that I use regularly in my class um, that basically places students into some sort of contextualized role, like they're an engineer, they're a, uh, oh, a, nice. a, a chef, or you know, pick a job type or industry, it'll force a student to assume that role, create something, but again, it's targeting a specific standard or learning objective. Um, that one I'm planning on being a free tool as well. Um, but all yeah. of these things, and this is what I'm hard at work trying to use my spare time to uh, <laughs> do is, um, and I'll, pre I'll pr uh, demo the lesson planning tool here in a minute, but all of these tools ultimately are going to, when you have your uh, your paid, your premium account, all of these things will like automatically be saved to your account. And you'll see this again when I do the lesson planning tool. Uh, they're all integrated with the AI-powered instructional coach, which means that you'll be able to have conversations like this with the activities that you produce with the tools or um, the questions that it generates for you. And so the AI coach is actually like aware of the content that you are producing or it, the AI tools are producing alongside you. Awesome. We have some excited viewers saying it's exciting and so cool. We did have another person ask if you could demo the activity engagement. Um, 
And sure. I definitely want to see the Would You Rather before we. Uh... I'm telling you, those are awesome. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, so even uh, with math questions, because <laughs> I, I struggle with this. I'm like, oh, like with social media posts, like, OK, I have to. A would you rather is a good one. I need to create something. And um, or um, like even memes. I like I go sometimes when I'm not feeling clever. I let the AI be clever for me. <laughs> yeah, well, I, t I total, totally empathize with you on that one, because uh, the would you rather question generator, it was the first tool that I made and launched. And it was because I use these questions so regularly. And uh, I've mentioned this on a different podcast I was on, but it felt like I reached a stage, even though I'm only a second year teacher, where it feels like I've read every would you rather question on the internet. And so I was like, man, I need, I need something new. I don't have the mental bandwidth to do it. So let's turn to AI. Um, and then, you know, throw in the, you know, you're trying to target a specific topic or uh, learning objective or standard uh, for the tool, then it's like, oh, these are really brand new would you rather questions that are targeted at a specific grade level or content. And then you'll also have the option of kind of choosing your own path here if you want some like absurd and hilarious. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> some people, you know, they want those serious or intellectual would you rather questions, which are great, but, you know, uh, I'm more of the absurd and the hilarious category personally. Yep. I love that you can create absurd and hilarious from funny. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's like, you know, it just I, tells me a little bit about your personality and I'm digging it. <laughs> well, it's funny. I, because the reason why I came up with these categories is like, I originally it was just like funny, serious, and intellectual, but the funny ones, like, they weren't like, ha ha ha, I'm laughing, rolling over in my chair, kind of funny. And so I was like, no, I want it to be like so obscure that an eighth grade, my eighth grade students are like, what are you talking about, Mr. Greenhall? And then it's like, they're really just like, I've got their attention there for 30 seconds. You, you um, really have to pull out the absurd and hilarious cards to get eighth graders to laugh. They're, they're at the, the peak of middle, right before they're, you know, they go into, I have an eighth grader as a, as a daughter. And uh, just the the evolution from seventh to eighth grade. I don't know what happens, but we just stop being funny to them. <laughs> yeah, um, I also empathize with you on that one. Uh, it's it's very easy to not be funny to eighth graders, is what I'm learning. Um, so it really is a humbling experience all every single day. It really is. Um, but well, be that as it may, couldn't do it. <laughs> when I started teaching middle school, I was in my twenties. And I thought, like, I'm going to be the cool teacher. No, nope. I was already too old. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, it's like 20, 21 is like the cap, basically. And then after that, you're just old, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But uh, it keeps right. it keeps us on our toes. All right. Give, give us a good would you rather. Yeah. So do you, um, I don't know. Hilarious. So we can you do. You have to do absurd and uh, hilarious. <laughs> Perfect. So uh, you can, you do get to select your grade level. So uh, we could throw fourth grade le uh, grade level in there. And then do you have a specific topic or something you'd like to see here for these questions? Um, I'm trying to think of fourth grade. Fourth grade does um, regions of the United States. Perfect. That's just the one thing I do remember from fourth grade. And you, and you did say absurd and hilarious, right? Yes. All yeah. right. Uh, so you do always have the option of subscribing to our newsletter if you so choose. Um, and then when you do click uh, generate AI responses, uh, this is one thing that uh, I'm personally proud, proud of and kind of want to continue to strive for when it comes to my AI tools that are free is what it does is it's not only um, kind of generating your questions for you. It's also generating a unique URL that you oh. can share. So oh. what you're actually looking at is basically its own brand new independent web page that is, uh, you know, you have access to all 10 of the questions that you have, but you can also share that link directly with anyone and it's live, it's free, it does not, it's not associated with any of your information whatsoever. Um, and then you also always have the ability to download a PDF version of your questions if you want to upload that to Google Drive or whatever tools you like to use. Uh, but again, this page is now like accessible to anyone that you would like to share it with. 
Um, so it looks like a lot of these are about food. Uh, but we got, would you rather live in a state where it snows chocolate milk or a state where it rains pizza? Again, the absurd part of the uh, prompting there kind of comes out in, in, in that, uh, in that then, way. Then you can, you can even extend that and have them think about like cultural and agricultural aspects of different regions. So where, where, would, where would a place, if any state or region was named for chocolate milk or milk in general, where would that be? Yep. And then pizza, come on. We've got Chicago and New York, like, mm -hmm. battle. Well, the it's battle. even better yeah. for us Illinois people is we have a lot of dairy farms around here, too. So it could just be a battle within our state. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, and so I'll, just scanning through these real quick, it does look like, um, you know, you have kind of specific <laughs> things. Like, buff, would you rather own a pet buffalo in Wyoming or a pet alligator in Florida? Um, and then, you know, talking about hot air balloons or roller coasters in the Grand Canyon, uh, I could easily see how some of these questions might open up uh, further conversations about, you know, specific regions of the U.S. and what is special about them. Um, now, if if you don't like any of these questions, you do always have the ability to reload the tool. Uh, and I always provide a helpful tip on these tools that's like, hey, if you're not happy with these, try changing up how you ask the question or the topic itself or be more descriptive. In and, you know, it's like, yeah, any, any AI tool, sometimes a small tweak can actually make a big difference when it comes to... Um, having you know more unique responses but that's just, that's basically the would you rather question generator it produces 10 questions based off your prompt grade level and your you know choose your own adventure absurd to serious level um, I, I love the that it actually creates a downloadable pdf um and that there's a link that's that's amazing because i could totally see myself creating folders on different topics or months and kind of save, you know, saving my, saving the good questions, saving, saving sets of would you rathers. Yeah. And that's honestly, that's kind of my next big phase here is making sure that everyone that does uh, have a premium account, that these things are, are like attached and there's, I'm working on a way of like easily organizing all this um, so that, you know, again, I'll always provide those, these ways of like public URLs if you want them or PDFs so that you can use your own data management tools, but also providing that as an option for any user on the site to like have immediate access to any of the resources that uh, my tools are creating for you. I also love the URL thing because um, like there are two sections of second grade at my school. And so if I want to, I didn't know this before, but if I want to now, I know I can just email her the URL and she can use the exact same thing. Exactly. Yeah. And that that's kind of the reason I wanted to put this into place is I don't want all the questions to just kind of like, oh, they existed for 30 seconds and now they're gone. Um, yeah. So it's like they, they do they they can live on if you yeah. want them. Uh, and then you do uh, at the bottom, uh, you have the option of sharing these directly on social media or um if you again want to use that URL or PDF to share. And then on my AI tools, I'll also kind of provide, in my opinion, how you could use these types of responses, or in this case, these would you rather questions. Um, so I try to not only provide like the actual content that AI produces, but then also like how you might integrate these into your classroom setting as well. So we have, we have two questions. Um, I'm going to start with this one. Um, is there any discount you're providing for members from other countries? I know um, in terms of uh, socioeconomics, like in uh, currency exchanges and different um, economies, there's, I know you're brand new to, you just developed this and it's probably <laughs> on the horizon. Um, yeah. So my, I'm going to kind of answer this one for you. So to that user as a brand new tool um, that that's up and running, like, and as a teacher and entrepreneur and developer, I'm certain um, down the line, there will be uh, some conversions when, when different countries come in and, and purchase the tool. But in the meantime, if you want to 
email me at amanda at teachergoals.com or reach out to auto classmate. Um, give me your um, Twitter social and I'm going to drop it in the comments for anyone interested in reaching out from other countries to kind of talk to you directly. Perfect. Yeah. So um, you can always reach out and I, I do try to be as responsive uh, as I can, especially on Twitter uh, at auto classmate. And then I'll also provide uh, my personal Twitter handle as well. Uh, which is Logan C. Greenhall. Uh, I try to kind of like keep both of those things always open. And I thank you for kind of answering that for for me as well. Um, I'm working hard to try to like create systems that are sustainable because I do like my passion behind all of this or my kind of goal is to provide as many tools as possible to as many educators as possible for as cheap as possible. Um, while also recognizing that I am a teacher and taking on some cost uh, to build this and a lot of time. Um, so I am trying to make a sustainable system, not just for myself, but for educators in general. Yeah, absolutely. And, and as, as a business, um, there, are, there are startup costs, there, are, there, there's sweat equity. There's all this time and money that you're dumping into this new tool. And while um, ideally we love everything to be free. There are products that we love that are worth paying, you know, the $10 a month for. And I see a lot of value in, in the tool that you built. And um, I know uh, that I'm excited about the developments that you have in the works. And I can't, I can't wait for the, the next tool. Yeah. So um, let's see, we've done uh, the AI powered instructional coach. We looked at the would you rather question generator. Um, I, think I think someone did say they wanted the act. The activity. There you yeah. go. <laughs> yeah. And Sorry. We, we had one more question. How can we make students understand daily routines by using AI? Ooh, that is a great question. I think for our AI powered instructional coach to answer, uh, because I'm a beginning teacher and I'm, who I'm still learning that one every single day. Um, That's more that, of a human skill yeah. <laughs> <laughs> through modeling, but I'm sure the instructional coach can help us as teachers make that, um, that routine more, um, I guess, tacit instead of. Yeah, I, I think you're, I think you're right. And I, I do believe that there are certain ways that we could already be utilizing AI to kind of help us better understand our, our students or specific like contextual learning environments. Um, and one of the like kind of long-term goals I have with Auto Classmate, and for anyone that's signed up for an account and gone through that process, you might already kind of have experienced a piece of this, is I actually ask users, it's completely optional, but I ask users to provide more information like about what kind of learning environment they have. And I prompt them to, you know, say, you know, do you teach in an EC environment or do you teach AIG students? Like who is it that you're teaching? And then do you have like behavioral management, um, like goals or issues that you're experiencing? And part of what I'm trying to do with these tools is kind of allow users to, throw that into uh, the AI responses so that like if you're using the lesson planning tool, then it'll actually take into account for, okay, this is for a, a teacher that, you know, they're at a public school, they teach four uh, units of eighth grade ELA every single day, but two of them are inclusions uh, setting classes or whatever it might be so that the plan is actually like more tailored towards you know, those specific students and helping those specific students learn whatever the learning objective is for the day. Um, but it is a really powerful question to ask, how is AI going to, and how should it, um, you know, help us with things like, you know, classroom management or understanding procedures or, you know, daily routines? I think it's a good question. Uh, I would be curious to ask the, my uh, AI powered instructional coach, uh, we could totally do that as well. But do you want me to preview the activation and engagement activity generator real quick? Let's let's do that first and end with the uh, end with asking the instructional coach. Cool. That way we've kind of seen a, seen a little bit of everything. Okay, so um, activation and engagement activity generator simply creates three unique uh, 
engaging activities for you know any grade level you get to choose which one that would be uh, so we could pick ninth grade and then um, do y'all have any like learning targets or an objective that you would like to see activities for off the top of your head um, all, um, my brain immediately goes to ELA stuff and I don't want it to just be overwhelmed by ELA so I, I taught history last year so okay. ninth grade was American history so um, hmm let's Let's look at the American Revolution. I want students to learn about the causes of the American Revolution. Okay, perfect. Causes of the American Revolution. Perfect. And I like how you went back and added the causes because, again, but depending on how broad we are, it's going to yeah. be the Thank response. Exactly. And that I do kind of, um, again, in my helpful tips, I'll say, which you'll see here in a moment, once the responses are generated and it creates that uh, public URL, um, it will be helpful for someone if they so choose to kind of go back and you can get as detailed and as specific as you want for what it is that you're wanting your students to learn. Um, but in this case, uh, so it's created three activities. One's a role-playing activity, one's a picture analysis activity, and one is a debate competition. Yes. Um, so I'll leave these up here as someone that is, you know, not necessarily a history buff by any stretch of the imagination. I don't know if I've got the best take on these types of activities, but I will say most of the activities this tool produces are kind of designed to be almost like games or competitions or something that, you know, usually puts students into groups to either create or debate something within their own uh, peer groups. Um, so it looks like that role-playing activity does invite students to uh, yeah, take side of us. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and I would say, as with any AI tool, like, always, 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 please don't just, like, be like, oh, this is perfect, I'm good to go, I'm going to implement this instantaneously, like, take into account all the implications of any of these activities. Yeah, if we, if we jump forward to the Civil War, I could see some big issues with taking sides there and, and role-playing, so... Yeah. For sure. Yeah, cultural sensitivity and just, you know, having that human factor, that empathy and that judgment. So. Exactly. Yeah. There's um, and actually that played into the development side of the would you rather question generator is I kind of did like a, a red teaming exercise on uh, that tool because I did notice that if you do like something like Civil War and Absurd and Hilarious, I can end up with some uh, not so great responses that would be a cause for concern. And that's something I'm continuing to work on is like a moderation component where it's like aware of like, hey, these these types of topics are incredibly complex to throw out into the AI world. Um, mm -hmm. And again, I would just say as a disclaimer, any AI tool, please, 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 you know, think through the questions you're asking and the responses that it gives you. Don't take it at face value and don't ask the questions that are going to elicit these, you know, um, you know potentially harmful activities or questions. Uh, yes. I think that's great guidance in general. So there's, so pedagogy is by definition, the art of teaching. And at, at the end of the day, we, we sculpt, it's our job to sculpt and mold resources into what, what is appropriate and what fits students in our classroom. So I guess this would be ped AI goji. Ped, <laughs> ped AI. Oh, I <laughs> think that might be in the book. <laughs> yeah. After the book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and if you, if you haven't gotten the copy yet, yeah, the AI classroom. Make sure you pick it up. It's it's got a bunch of wonderful tools, strategies, and it is truly uh, the ultimate guide coming in at three hundred and and eighty nine pages. So, but for sure. <laughs> so a great I, resource, though. I'm a big fan of debates. We did, we, uh, we'd have, and my students would beg for them. And, and when, when we did seventh grade or when I was a seventh grade ELA teacher, my seventh graders, they loved, they loved debating. And I had a debate box where they, oh, would, cool. they would put in topics and I'd just draw one out at the end and I'd be like, no, <laughs> like, <laughs> because as, as seventh grade, you know, as a teacher, again, 
this is your this is your box. You're pulling up these suggestions, and um, as you're sorting through them, you have to decide what's appropriate, what's um, what's insensitive, what's not. But um, this is a great tool to uh, to start somewhere to where you, you don't have to create anything from thin air. You, you're given a canvas with a paint by number, and you can kind of like. <laughs> You, well, you are. You, you can you can put in the the standard, even and um, turn the standard into a question, and have it generate something for you. For sure, yeah. Um, and so again, with all of the tools, it's going to create uh, that public URL as well as a PDF that you can download and share with uh, anyone that you'd like. Uh, but that is basically the activity and. Um, or the activation and engagement activity generator in a nutshell. And I, I love using this tool because it's like three very quick activities that you could implement usually with like little cost or much time or preparation. Like it's kind of a quick base thing that could mm -hmm. potentially be a simple thing to add to any lesson. Can it, um, can it generate or recommend resources? Um, so this is kind of the other piece that we've not fully explored yet, but um, with your uh, the paid account, uh, part of what is, and I can just demo, I won't go through the lesson planning tool in its entirety, um, but I was just going to show real quickly uh, the, when you create a lesson plan with Auto Classmate, uh, what actually happens, and these are just two that I had I've made over the past week or so. Um, you, when you create a lesson plan, it generates again, you know, we could walk through this and do a full demo of how all this stuff gets created. But when you create a lesson plan with a mm -hmm. paid account, uh, the AI powered instructional coach is right there alongside oh. you. And what happens is it's actually aware of the lesson plan. So it's the same tool that we demoed earlier uh, in the live stream, except that it's now like hyper aware of the lesson that you've created. And so you could ask it to um, to any questions about this specific specific lesson plan. Well, I can have I, it rewrite the procedures or... 100%. So okay. you could have it rewrite procedures, you could have it create more activities, or you could ask clarifying questions about specific components of the lesson plan uh, itself. But the reason I brought this up is to answer the question about the activation and engagement activity generator. Uh, it is not live, but it is an active development that if you have a paid account, when you create any activation and engagement activity responses, you'll also have the AI powered instructional coach alongside you. And you could ask then for resources for that specific um, set nice. of activities. Uh, I, again, I would caution, and I think that you had this, um, you've said this before on some of your live streams, like anytime that you ask AI to generate you know, whether it's a URL or a resource, whatever it's leading you to, always double check that, make sure it's a real link that it's going somewhere. Uh, but I'm also actively trying to make sure that my tools are producing like real things. Um, but anyways, that is a just quick like walkthrough of, um, I didn't go through the process necessarily of how you'd create a lesson plan, but I did just want to throw out that you do have the AI powered instructional coach alongside you um, when you do create um, resources with a paid account. Um, but I know that you said that you wanted to go back to the instructional coach, I think, but were there any questions y'all had about like the lesson planning tool or anything while we're still in it? No, I, I love it. Um, we did have one question. Um, can you direct it to use strategies that you're required to use in your lesson plans, like Kagan strategies? Yes. So I'll, um, I won't walk through it unless you fully want me to, but when you do go in to create a lesson plan with uh, my tool, basically what I did was um, when you sign up for an account, first of all, it's going to ask you to register like with the grade level and with your content area. And then the tool is actually going to automatically like import or populate those fields with whatever you registered as. So if you're an A380LA teacher, it's going to automatically 
include that you're an eighth grade ELA teacher, but you can always change these. Uh, again, this main question is what is it you want students to learn? And then um, I put together just eight components that mm -hmm. I created or put this list together based off of a Twitter poll or a series of uh, Twitter polls that I did a while ago wow. that were just like common features of lesson plans. But you are able to uh, then, if you want to select any of these components, you can also add your own components. So if you have like specific structures or if you would like to throw in things like interactive games or vocab lists or higher order thinking questions, you can add as many components as you would like and it'll then create a lesson plan that's tailored to you um, in the process. So uh, I hope that answers that, um, that question, but you do have that option to add any kind of custom components that you would like to any of your lesson plans. Awesome, and we are, we are right at 7.50, so we're running out of time. Is there one more thing you wanna show or one um, piece of advice you wanna leave teachers with or our viewers with that are, that are watching? <laughs> Yeah, well, so, I mean, the piece of advice that I'd say um, and kind of where I'm at is I know that there's so many tools and platforms that are that have come out that are continuing to come out. And I think it's awesome that there are so many of them. And I do think it's important to find one that works well for you. Um, and what I would say is like my heart behind Auto Classmate was to provide as many free resources as possible for educators and what I'm kind of in the process of trying to do and figure out is how do I also listen to, you know, my fellow teachers, my colleagues, but also educators around the world, and how do we create tools kind of collectively that we can all make use of? Um, so I'm very interested. I love it when uh, the users that have signed up for accounts that are using the tools, I've got like a support uh, request or a, um, a little... Uh, place where they're able to uh, do like a feature uh, request and they're just geniuses the users on here they're like "Ooh, well what if we had a tool that's like this and I don't think that's like the space that humanity needs to go is like let's create things together let's mm -hmm. use AI together not just to like you know create the lesson plan but like what else could we imagine together what other types of questions can we ask of AI together? And I'm very interested in knowing those things from teachers so I can turn around and help create the tools that they might use. Um, so my piece of advice is let's just create something that's like unique together. Um, and that's kind of my promise to users is you have the option of telling me what features you want. And that's kind of what steers the ship when it comes to Auto Classmate for now. It is also the recipe for longevity for a company. When they're responsive to users, they, they go in and they add the features that are asked for. So um, I commend you on, on a fantastic tool. We have two more questions real quick, and then uh, we're, we're going to call it. So um, Cherie uh, says, for special education teachers who teach at the elementary level and multiple subject areas, is there an option to choose multiple subjects, or would they, would they have to generate individual lessons? Uh, that's a really wonderful question, and that's one that um, she's not the first one to ask that question, actually. Um, so what I would say is you can, when it comes to um, the lesson planning tool, you're able to input multiple content areas. So you could say ELA, math, science, and whatever other subjects you would like um simultaneously so it'll create a lesson plan that incorporates all of those things simultaneously um i would personally say it might make more sense to separate them so that you have a more specific response for each independent category um, of content but it can do that um, when you register for an account it does i ask people to select one content area but you always have the option, again, of adding as many as you want when you're using um, any of the AI tools that I've created. Can you also select multiple grade levels? So like for me, I teach kindergarten through fifth grade normally. Yeah, that's that's something I don't currently have live on there. And that's not but it's not the first time I've heard that one as well is you've got a scenario where you are teaching 
multiple grades simultaneously. So that's a feature I'm trying to work on right now is how do you select multiple grade levels in a way that makes sense. Um, Cause the way that I created these um, specifically the lesson planning tool is like, I want it to be detailed enough, but not so overly detailed right out of the gate that um, it doesn't open up the door for more flexibility. Um, and what I've learned with AI specifically is when you start to overwhelm a prompt, mm -hmm. um, you're where you like you're asking it to do one too many things is it'll leave out bits and pieces of that prompt without, you know, you necessarily realizing it all the time. But again, I think it's a really important uh, feature to be able to select multiple grade levels. And that's but kind you of can actually change it in the lesson. So like if I signed up as a kindergarten can, teacher, I could still do the fifth grade lesson and a hundred percent. Correct. Yeah. You're always able to um, select your grade level. It just auto populates the one you registered for. Okay. Um, well, and the other, the other well, pieces. Hold on. Um, Cherie wants to know if there's an option for district for a district to buy a campus subscription. Uh, yes, there actually is. So if you go to, to um, autoclassmate.io slash become a member, um, you'll see this is the space where you can register for your own personal account. Uh, but then also there's a school and district pricing that I don't have that publicly listed because I'm still learning how on earth you're supposed to price that type of uh, thing. As a teacher, I'm like, how, I, I don't know how to do that. But um, I have I've had conversations with three districts or I have I have three active conversations with districts about pricing in bulk. And it is something that I'm offering and would love to have that conversation um, with you or an administrator or um, superintendent district, whoever it is, is the point person. I do offer that. Amanda, you're muted. All right. Sorry, my dogs are going crazy. We had one more question. Um, my, my response to the question is please reach out to Logan on social. Every, anyone who has any more questions, if I didn't get to you, I apologize. Um, he was demoing some great content and um, I, I didn't want to inundate him and have him go in 50 different directions and do one well. So um, make sure you connect with him. Um, he is at auto classmate on Twitter and um, I've shared this and I've shared his personal and his uh, professional Twitters in the chat. Um, please be sure to check on that. And thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, Logan, for um, taking time to demo such a wonderful tool. Again, I don't know what you guys do after you get off work, but Logan's obviously changing the world as we know it. It's a tool that's going to lighten our load. So um, we are going to call it a night have a wonderful taco tech tuesday and um i actually have tacos in my future right now so um, enjoy yes yeah, yeah. so as we play the outro no i'm dreaming of tacos so <laughs> and, um, auto bye. check it out bye courses by teacher goals register now for the canva classroom